Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Lately I've been getting a lot of requests to do a pour painting, which are really popular on the internet right now. So I thought that for February we would focus on two types. The first one is a single color pour, and it's called that because you're only using a single color for the pour. The other one is a multicolor pour, where we're taking multiple colors and pouring them on top of the canvas. We're going to be focusing on this later in the month, but for now, we're going to be doing this one. In general, pour paintings remind me a lot of the Earthbound Battle Backgrounds because of their randomness and organic nature, which is the inspiration behind today's piece. But with a single color pour, its main purpose is to show an underpainting by scraping or dabbing or using some other method to get some of the paint off the canvas. Specifically, I'm trying to recreate the background for the Starman Super, um, the one you fight for the Sword of Kings in the Stonehenge base. It's always been my favorite background of these wavy lines that are all rainbow in color. Um, in order to do that for colors, I need primary magenta, primary yellow, primary cyan, and I'm going to lighten them all up with titanium white. And I'm using the heavy body, like standard tubes of paint for that. And I realized doing my test that the violet and the blue were way too dark. So I'm just going to lighten everything up with some titanium white. The pour itself does require a few specialized things, um, and the first one is a media. And for the media, I'm using GAC 800, and GAC just stands for Golden Artist Colors, um, and it just helps create a nice flexible paint when it dries. Normally I don't have a problem with my paint cracking because I paint so thinly on a canvas, but this does get a little bit thicker than I'm used to, so I definitely wanted to make sure I didn't have that problem. But if you're someone who paints really thick like Van Gogh would, definitely use this to keep your paints flexible. Um, and as for my color, I'm using Golden High Flow in Carbon Black. Um, and it does create a nice opaque color when I mix them together. So that's a really great thing about doing this with the carbon black because it is so opaque I don't have to worry about the stuff showing through. And then to get the lines, I'm using this squeegee by Catalyst and it has these little half circles cut out of two of the sides. And they have a lot of different types. They have some on brush handles, they have some that are smaller. I went with this one because I have a huge canvas to cover and to scrape away. Um, and I went with this shape because I really like the half circle and how it has a nice flat piece to carve away a lot of the pour on top. When this is all dry, I will be painting a Starman Super on top, um, and I'm going to try and focus on some of the reflective qualities of it. And I'm going to stick with the same colors I had for the underpainting just to mix up anything new I may need. But I'm also going to use some carbon black in case I need to use it to make a shade. In order to get a nice smooth spectrum of the rainbow colors, I'm doing my primaries first, and then after they're done, I'm going to go into my um, secondary colors and paint them right between overlapping on both. That way I can make sure I see my primaries and I'll have a smoother transition in the end. To make a nice gradient, I'm going into the secondary colors, which is orange, green, and violet, and I'm going to paint them in between and like half and half on each side of each primary. And then I'm going to get the primary on my brush and blend it into the primary so I have this nice transition through all the colors. So this is my setup for pour painting. I have a cardboard box lined with plastic sheeting, um, and it's a good way to kind of keep everything contained. And the plastic doesn't let anything soak through, get into the box, go on the carpet. It keeps everything here in the box with the canvas. Um, you'll also notice I have the painting raised up from the surface because what happens is the paint will run down the side and then if it's sitting right on the plastic, it will stick it to the plastic and be stuck. And because it is plastic, I can peel it up um, like this is peeling up here, but it's not very pretty and I want to make sure that I keep it nice. So I've raised it up and I did that by taking a red Solo cup and just cutting off the top here on the line. So I have all of these little risers underneath the canvas um, and they're all cut on the line so they're about the same. 
Now you do want to make sure they're pretty close because you want this to be level. So this is the level app on iOS under compass. And if it's not level, what's going to happen is wherever it's lower, like say this corner was lower, all of the paint will flow to this and either be really thick or it'll run all off the side here, and then you'll have none over there. So you want the entire thing to be level. When you do this, you wanna have everything ready to go. Otherwise, you'll have paint out and it'll be messy and you just want it all ready to go so you're not running around. Um, so I have something to mix the pour in. It's just the other half of that Solo cup. I have the things I need to do the pour, the GAC 800 and my high flow acrylic. I have my scraper tool ready to go. It's all cleaned off. Um, and you also need something to spread the paint with. Um, when it pours out, it kind of pours in these long lines and you want a nice, flat, even coverage of it. So when I did this little um, 8x10, I just used this skewer and pulled it across like that just to make sure it was flat and even and I could just kind of scrape all the extra off in one go. But with this big canvas, that's a little harder. Um, you could use a palette knife like this one. And this one is offset so my fingers aren't resting on it. Um, if you use one that's not offset, it's really hard because then your fingers are in the paint and getting stuff everywhere. Um, but you could just easily use a paintbrush and I'm going to be using this gigantic one. So I have my GAC 800 and I'm using like nine parts GAC 800 to one part of the fluid paint. So I'm just putting some of it in the Solo Cup and it doesn't really take all that much because I need such a thin layer of it. Um, there's really not that much in the cup. It maybe only comes up halfway to this first line. Um, and you want to make sure you really shake this high flow acrylic because the pigments can settle a little bit. And you can hear there's like a marble or something inside to help make it a nice dispersed mixture. So I'm just going to put a little of that in there. Make sure I seal it back up. And I'm just going to use this palette knife to stir everything around and make a nice even mixture of it. Once I have a nice even mixture, I'm going to start working quickly. Um, I can't wait around too long. I'm going to pour it on top of the canvas, get every bit out of the cup that I can, and immediately switch to my paintbrush to brush it out and make a nice even thin layer across the canvas. And then I'll have to very quickly switch to the scraper tool and start carving in my lines. So here we go, and I'm just going to kind of try and evenly disperse it the best I can trying to get all of it out so I don't have as much to brush all across the canvas. And then I'm switching to my brush and I'm just going to move it everywhere, cover everything really good, try and still work really quickly. And I have a lot of extra paint. You can kind of see it puddling here in the middle. And I'm going to use that to brush to the edges to get all the way out here and then also down the sides. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to switch to the scraper and start to fill in these curves. And it's kind of hard on the edge because you need to line it back up. But if you're real careful, you can get it kind of nice here off the edges. Now the edges are a little harder to do, um, so I'm not going to work on those. I'm just going to kind of let them be solid black. And while it's still a little wet, you can kind of brush over it and redo it if you mess it up. But every time you do that, um, the paint dries more and more where the colors are, and the colors will be covered more and more with black every time you do it. So while it's wet, I may do a little bit of cleanup like right here where I got that extra mark. But otherwise, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Once I'm done with it, I need to leave it flat for at least 24 hours. Um, I live in a super humid climate, so it takes a little bit longer for some things to dry, but definitely come back like the next day and see if it's dry before you pick it up. You don't want to ruin all of this work you did. And I'm also going to cover the box so nothing falls into it like dust or hair. Um, I'm just going to be using a big piece of cardboard, but you could prop up like taller cups or something and put another piece of cardboard over it. It's not important to like seal it but you want to have like something above it so nothing falls on top of it. 
We're back here on the easel and it's actually been 48 hours since that last clip when it was flat. Um, after the first 24 I just tested it by lightly touching it with my fingertips and it was sticking to my fingers but it wasn't like leaving any paint on it. So it was kind of dry but there was still some moisture in it. So I decided to leave it another 24 so I could work on it. And now it's not sticking at all and it's definitely not coming up on my hands. So I can start to draw in my Starman Super and I'd like to do that with a chalk pastel pencil because I find that it doesn't ruin what's underneath, I don't see it underneath the paint after I paint, and it doesn't like leave marks at all. So I can just use a damp cloth and just erase it really cleanly and really easily. And because this is dry, it's not going to come up on my cloth, it's just already set there permanently. So it's a really great thing to do for that. Now this technique is really great, you could do any sort of character you wanted on top, you could do any combination of the background. Um, where I did the black pour, you could use any color you wanted. You could do any sorts of shapes with the carving, um, you could just do a silhouette of a character, you could do a reverse silhouette where everything out here is black and then the inside is all of the colors with the shapes. Um, so there's a lot you can do with this technique, but like I said it reminded me of the Starman Super background, so I just sort of pushed it in that direction by doing the rainbow and by doing the wave. Um, and then with the Starman Super, I'm just going to draw a line at the 12 inch mark. Because this background tends to show up when you only have the one in the Stonehenge base, he ends up straight in the middle. So I'm going to draw myself a line um, and then just work symmetrically out from there so he's perfectly even on both sides. To make things symmetrical, this is how I do it. I do a halfway line down the middle of my canvas, so it's 12 inches, and then I do like a really rough sketch of where I want this to go. And it's mostly to figure out how tall I want it to be, um, how far down I want it to come on the canvas, and then like how far left and right I need it to be. So on the right, it's hard to see because I was drawing super light. I was just kind of roughly sketching in the arms and the feet and where everything was going to go. And then I worked on refining the lines on the left to make everything perfect and how I liked it. Um, things like how wide the arm should be here, how far down on the body it comes um, compared to like the midpoint here, how I want the feet to turn and what direction they need to sit, um, things like that. So on the left I worked until I was completely happy with it. So now I'm working on mirroring it here on the right. And the way I do that is with my T-square. So I line up my T-square on the side of the canvas so it's nice and square to it. And the 12 inch mark is right here on half. So then what I do is I count out how far left and right each one of the lines is. So if I come up here, and I line this 9 inch mark with the top part of the shoulder here. That is 1, 2, 3 inches from center. So because it's level here, I'll just go 3 inches the other way, 1, 2, 3 up to 15, and then I'll continue my line until I get to 15. It's kind of like a strange version of connect the dots, where there aren't any dots and you're just making it up as you go. So if I move this down to um, eight and a half inches, I can come over here and find the same measurement away from center and keep tracing this line down until I get to that same 15 and a half mark over here. And then I'll move it down to eight. And it looks like I don't get all the way out to eight. It looks like I'm about a 16th away from the eight inch mark. So if I count out one, two, three, and 15 sixteenths, I can go one, two, three, and 15 sixteenths. And then I'll just keep connecting these lines all the way down and around the entire Starman. The great thing about chalk pastel is you can erase it if you don't like it and start all over. And after I've drawn this and kind of looked at it a little bit, I've realized it's too big. I need to make the Starman super smaller. So I'm just going to take my damp cloth and erase it. Um, and I'm not going to erase everything. I've kind of made these little tiny marks to show myself where I want it to go next drawing. Um, and I want to keep those there or I'll forget how much smaller it should actually be. To block this in white, I'm using the High Flow Golden and Titanium White in this empty marker. I could easily put this on a palette and use a brush, um, but it's a little bit easier sometimes to use the marker to draw.
I did one layer with the liquid white and it's kind of too transparent. So now that it's dry, I'm going to take my damp cloth and just wipe away all of the extra chalk. And then I'm going to go over the top of the white with a heavy body white that's a bit more opaque. The Starman Super is blocked in and now I need to start painting him gold, but I don't have just the right color in a tube so I need to make it. Um, so I have some primary yellow here on my palette and it's really really bright and lemon colored. And I want it to look more like this, which is a little bit more orange and a little less saturated. So what I'm going to do first is tone this brightness down and opposite on the color wheel of yellow is violet. Um, so I have a violet here, but you can make one up really easy with just a little bit of magenta and a little bit of cyan and just mix them together. Now I do want to warn you that um, you need to be careful about this mix for your violet. And if you're not sure if it's violet enough or if it's too blue or too red, you can test a little bit of it with a little bit of the yellow. Now when I was doing this earlier, I took all of my violet and scooped it into the yellow and mixed it up. And there was too much blue in my violet, so it made green because blue and yellow make green. Um, so you want to be really careful about that. You want to make sure you have enough red so it's not too blue and enough blue so it's not too red. Um, but once you have a good color and you've tested it against a little bit of yellow, you can mix it in and you'll notice that it gets um, kind of desaturated really quick so you don't want to use too much paint. In fact, I might wipe off my palette knife before I get any to put here in this yellow. And it's toning it down and kind of making it just a little muddy. I don't want to make it brown like this burnt sienna here but I don't want to make it bright yellow anymore either. And then once I'm happy with it kind of mixed in and I have kind of this muddy looking yellow color, it's still really yellow and not orange compared to this one up here. So what I need to do is make it a little bit more orange. And the way we make yellow orange is we add some magenta to it. So I'm just gonna go and grab a little bit of this magenta, just a little bit, and then mix it in. And that's looking like a pretty good gold color. It's pretty comparable to this one up here. Um, it's a little less saturated than the one I already have, and that's probably because I added more purple into this new one than the old one over here. Um, so you can just play around with it and see what you get. You can always add more yellow into it. I could add more red if I wanted it to be warmer. I could add more violet if I want to tone it down a little bit. But I have this nice gold color now that I can use. To fill in the Starman Super, I want to have five different values of this gold. I'm going to have pure titanium white be number one. I'm going to have titanium white with a little bit of gold be color number two. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of gold into this titanium white. And then I want to have number three be an equal mixture of half and half. And then number four is going to be more gold and less titanium white. And then number five is just going to be the gold by itself. So those are my five values for the Starman Super. I'm obviously going to be using the titanium white as the highlight and the gold as the shadow. But I think I want to make this piece a little bit more special. So I'm going to add in some interference gold fine into each of these colors. I'm just going to add a little bit into each to make them all slightly um, iridescent and they're going to kind of shine back a true gold color. So here are those five colors mixed in with our gold paint and it has a very subtle metallic effect, which I really like. It's not overwhelming at all. Now in my sketchbook, I did a little swatch of all five colors over here on the right. Um, here kind of in the middle, I did a gradient of the colors without the gold and then I just painted the gold by itself on top, right here on the right side of that gradient. And if I move it back and forth, you can definitely see where the gold is. It kind of shines on my lights. And I like how um, our five colors over here work with the gold. Like I said, it's not overwhelming, it's very subtle, and you can still see the value between the darkest color and the lightest color. But here, where I've done the gold on top of the value scale, when it hits the light, you can't see the value anymore, and it's really overwhelming. And I don't like how that looks, at least for this painting that we're doing. A couple of things to know about this paint. Um, interference is different than iridescent. The silver here is iridescent, and it's a lot more opaque. It's almost like a true silver paint you would find, whereas the interference is really subtle. In some lights, you can't even tell it's gold at all. They also make like blue and green and purple and different things. Um, also the particle size. These are both fine. The particles are real tiny. If you go up to a course, you start to see the bits of silver and gold that are in it. Almost like um, 
pieces of glitter. These ones are just really tiny pieces of glitter. Um, so that's kind of the difference between these two. Because the interference is so transparent, all of those five colors I mixed up don't show up as well on top of the white. You can really see everything underneath. So I'm going to do a base layer of that original gold before I added any of the interference gold in. From here, I'm just going to take my chalk pastel, mark in the highlights and the shadows, and fill those both in with that lightest and that darkest color. And then I'm going to use everything in between to kind of fade it from one into the other. I used the chalk pastel to draw in the shadow, the insignia, and the visor, and I'm just going to fill those all in with the liquid carbon black. The insignia and visor look really flat, and that's just because they're solid carbon black. So I'm going to use a gray mixture that I make from the carbon black and titanium white to do kind of a little bit of reflectiveness on those things. And then I'm going to use a little bit of pure titanium white to do kind of a catch light. Um, and that's just going to be like super small areas where that happens. I also did my name first in titanium white, but it felt too bright and bringing too much attention down here. So then I went over it with like the number two or number three gold color from the Starman Super. The insignia I'm doing kind of like a little bevel on each and I'm using like that medium gray to do each side of the bevel and I'm using pure titanium white on the very bottom left of everything and then it's kind of on the inside of the bevel on the top right just because there's so much reflective here and there is some here but there is less. For the visor I'm just using different shades of gray um, mixed up with the titanium and the carbon to kind of match where the highlights are on the top part of the head here. And then I'm just going to go back to the carbon and outline it in black so it looks like it's kind of recessed into the mask. And we're done! We have a Starman Super from Earthbound. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmail.com. And if you painted alongside me today, whether it was this piece or something similar, I'd love to see it. Please tweet me with the hashtag Malmakes. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Malmakes. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.